In every epic tale, from ancient legends to modern blockbusters, a protagonist embarks on a transformative journey. A transition from youthful naivety to the wisdom of maturity, a story of becoming. But what if this journey, this very rite of passage, seems interrupted, delayed, or even halted? What if Peter Pan chose never to leave Neverland? The world is changing. We're living in an era where the age-old rituals and traditions that once signposted our pathway from childhood to adulthood have either evolved or disappeared entirely. Gone are the days when manhood's rites of passage were clearly defined, when milestones such as leaving home, securing steady employment, or starting a family were the common signifiers of having grown up. Enter the 21st century, and we encounter a peculiar phenomenon, a substantial group of young men who, in many ways, appear to remain stuck in a perpetual state of adolescence. This isn't a mere stereotype portrayed in sitcoms or joked about at family gatherings. It's a societal reality with tangible implications impacting economies, family structures, and the individual psyches of those caught in its wake. The numbers speak for themselves. As of the last few decades, we've seen a significant spike in the number of young men, particularly those in their 20s and 30s, still living at home. In the United States alone, the Pew Research Center reported in 2020 that a staggering 52% of young adults resided with one or both of their parents, a percentage not witnessed since the Great Depression era. But it isn't just about living arrangements. Employment rates, too, paint a worrying picture. The labor force participation rate among young men has been on a consistent decline. While several factors contribute to this, from automation to global economic shifts, the personal narratives often revolve around feelings of disenfranchisement or a perceived lack of opportunity. Many express feeling outmatched, outpaced, and often out of place. More than just economical, the emotional and psychological landscapes of these men reveal signs of developmental delays. A survey from the American Psychological Association indicated a rise in reported feelings of loneliness, aimlessness, and a sense of being stuck among this demographic. Traditional markers of adulthood seem to elude them, not just in achieving them, but often in even desiring them. Now, these statistics and observations aren't meant to berate or criticize. They're a call to understand, to empathize, and more critically to seek solutions. If we're to aid these young men in their passage to maturity, we first need to fathom the depths of this modern enigma. So why is this happening? Why, in an age of unprecedented information and opportunity, do so many young men feel lost in the labyrinth of adulthood? It's tempting to lay blame on contemporary culture or the whims of the new generation, but that's an oversimplified answer to a multifaceted puzzle. To truly dissect this quandary, we need to dig deeper. We need to tap into the wellspring of knowledge left behind by some of history's most astute observers of the human condition, our philosophers, psychologists, and mythologists. What lessons, warnings, or guidance did they leave behind that might illuminate our path? How did ancient societies navigate the murky waters of manhood? What does our current societal structure contribute to this conundrum? And can age-old myths, like those elucidated by Joseph Campbell, offer a mirror to today's young man, lost in his own hero's journey. Join us as we delve into this intriguing exploration, seeking not just answers, but also strategies to reignite the ageless fire of growth, responsibility, and maturity. Because every young man deserves his hero's journey, and every society benefits from the stories of those who've walked the path before. Joseph Campbell, a name synonymous with mythology and the human experience, crafted a framework that transcends time, geography, and culture. This framework is known as the monomyth, a singular narrative underlying countless myths, legends, and stories from every corner of the globe. At its heart, it's not merely a scholarly concept, 
It's a mirror to our own lives, our trials, and our transformations. Campbell once said, Myths are public dreams, dreams are private myths. In stating this, he highlighted that the tales that have endured centuries, even millennia, share a common structure because they reflect the shared experiences of humanity. Whether it's the quests of Greek heroes, the spiritual journeys in ancient Indian texts, or the adventures of modern superheroes, the same pattern emerges over and over. This pattern, as Campbell identified, is the hero's journey. To delve into the hero's journey, we must first appreciate its three distinct phases, separation, initiation, and return. Separation marks the beginning, where the hero departs from the familiar world. It's a moment of disruption, where the status quo is challenged. Sometimes this separation is voluntary, other times it's forced upon the hero. Think of Luke Skywalker's humble beginnings on Tatooine, far removed from the vast expanse of the galaxy, until an unexpected turn of events pushes him onto a path of destiny. For many young men, this phase is analogous to leaving home for the first time, starting college, or stepping into the workforce. It's an uncomfortable yet essential rift from the familiar. The second phase, initiation, encompasses the heart of the journey. Here, the hero faces numerous challenges, meeting allies and adversaries, experiencing both defeats and triumphs. This is the phase of growth, where skills are honed, beliefs are questioned, and identity is forged. Campbell's emphasis on this phase is crucial. It's not the destination but the journey that molds the hero. In the context of our young men, think of the myriad challenges of adulthood. Establishing a career, building meaningful relationships, grappling with failures, and celebrating personal achievements. These experiences, both bitter and sweet, are the crucibles in which their maturity is tested and tempered. Finally, the return. After facing the ordeals, after growing and evolving, the hero must return to the familiar world, bringing back the wisdom and the gifts acquired from the journey. This is not merely a physical return. It's a symbolic homecoming, marking the hero's transformation from who they once were to who they've become. For young adults, this might symbolize achieving a level of stability, perhaps starting a family, or simply realizing a deeper understanding of themselves and their place in the world. The uh, rituals of initiation of young men in some of the very simple societies are extremely interesting. The boys are brought up to be in fear of the masks that the men wear in their rituals. These are the gods. These are the personifications of the powers that structure the society. The boy when he gets to be more than his mother can handle. The men come in with their masks, or whatever their costume is, and they grab the kid, and he thinks he's been taken by the gods, taken out into the men's ground, and he's beaten up and everything else. But then there, in New Guinea, there's a wonderful, wonderful event where this poor kid has to stand up and fight a man with a mask. I'd say he's fighting the god. The man lets the kid win, takes the mask off, puts it on the kid. Now the mask is not there defeated and simply said, oh, this is just myth. He said the mask represents the power that is shaping the society and has shaped you and now you are a representative of that power. That's a big story. And there are quite a number of examples uh, around the world. Down in um, Tierra del Fuego, the Ona people down there had rituals of this kind where the kid had to get up and fight this god power that he'd always been afraid of. And the man put up a good fight for the kid, you know, but then the boy won. Now you're a man. You've got broken past the image as fact and understand the image as metaphor. And you are to represent 
what the metaphor stands for. How does the hero's journey reflect the path of today's young men to adulthood? An intriguing observation is that many seem trapped in the initiation phase. While they have separated from their childhood, they grapple with the trials and tribulations of the initiation without seeming to find their way out. The dragons they face aren't mythical beasts, but rather societal pressures, personal insecurities, economic uncertainties, and often a lack of clear purpose or direction. Their battles are silent, internal, and often unacknowledged. Several reasons can explain this prolonged initiation. The modern world with its overwhelming choices can induce a paralysis of sorts. Traditional milestones of adulthood may seem elusive due to shifting societal norms. The digital age, with its constant comparisons on social media platforms, can exacerbate feelings of inadequacy or being left behind. The journey, which in myths was often simplified with clear adversaries and challenges, has become more abstract, more internalized. While ancient heroes had mentors, guiding figures offering wisdom and direction, many young men today feel they're navigating their journey without a compass. In the absence of these guides, the roadmap to the return phase remains obscure. However, recognizing this prolonged initiation is the first step to addressing it. By understanding where they stand on their hero's journey, young men can seek out the mentors, the experiences, and the wisdom they need to progress towards their personal return. The beauty of Campbell's framework is not just in its analysis, but its inherent hope. Every hero, no matter the odds, has the potential for triumph. In understanding this journey and recognizing its universal applicability, society too can play its part. By fostering environments of understanding, by providing resources and guidance, and by acknowledging the unique challenges of modern adulthood, we can help guide our young men to complete their hero's journey. After all, every hero deserves a triumphant return. Again, in New Guinea, there's a ritual where the kid, is, uh, his eyes are covered by the initiating man, and the bull roar comes over and he tells him, now the demon, dragon, grandpa is coming to eat you. He thinks he's a goner. That's the Liebestod idea that Wagner handles, you see. You think you're dead, and bing, you've broken past it. You've got a new, expanded life bigger. What has died has been the infantile ego. We, until we're pretty well along 12, 13, 14, are utterly dependent on our parents and on our society. So a psychology of dependency is developed. A psychology of submission, asking for approval, uh, expecting reproof, and all this sort of thing. But how are we going to break out of that psychological bondage? into self-responsible authority, courage for what our thoughts are on our life. Um, this is the problem of killing the infantile ego, which is one of dependency, and coming into the mature ego of authority. Every myth, legend, or fable that resonates with us has a pivotal moment, the confrontation with the dragon. For Campbell, this dragon isn't just a beast in the tales of yore. It is the manifestation of our deepest fears, challenges and doubts. It's a symbolic representation of those formidable obstacles we must overcome to realize our full potential. For young men navigating the maze of modern adulthood, these dragons take on very personal, very real forms. The first such dragon many young men confront is fear. The world outside the familiar cocoon of adolescence is fraught with uncertainty. The fear of not being good enough, of failing, of not living up to societal benchmarks can be paralyzing. With the information deluge of the digital age, this fear is amplified. 
Every success story they see on social media, every peer who seems to be leagues ahead stokes the fire of this fear. It's the gnawing doubt whispering, what if I'm not cut out for this or what if I never find my way? Then there's the gargantuan dragon of societal pressures, the tapestry of society woven with threads of expectations, norms and judgments can be stifling. When will you settle down? Isn't it time you had a stable job? When will we see you with someone? These questions, while seemingly innocuous, bear weight. The societal blueprint of what a successful adulthood looks like can be both a guide and a shackle. It's a constant reminder of the milestones they haven't achieved, the checkboxes still unticked. Lastly, the perhaps most daunting dragon is that of personal insecurities. These are the scars and wounds from past experiences, the internalized criticisms, and the self-deprecating beliefs that become barriers to growth. It's the voice that says, you're not smart enough, not strong enough, not worthy enough. This dragon, silent yet powerful, casts a shadow over their journey, often redirecting their path or halting it altogether. But as Campbell elucidated, the dragon isn't just an adversary, it's an opportunity. Confronting the dragon isn't just about vanquishing an external challenge, it's a profound moment of internal growth. By facing their fears, by challenging societal norms, and by healing personal insecurities, young men don't just progress on their journey, they transform. This confrontation is more than a battle, it's a rite of passage. It's the chrysalis from which they emerge, not as boys, but as men who've embraced their true selves. But what does this true self look like? Campbell's wisdom suggests it's the discovery of one's own personal legend or unique calling. To borrow from another great thinker who wrote The Alchemist, the personal legend is what you have always wanted to accomplish. It's that innermost dream, untainted by external expectations or societal molds. Finding this legend isn't about meeting benchmarks set by others, but about aligning with one's inner compass. In the cacophony of modern life, amidst the myriad voices telling them who they should be, the challenge for young men is to find and listen to their own voice. It's about asking, who am I, separate from what the world wants me to be? This introspection, this journey inward, is perhaps the most critical step towards true adulthood. Because maturity isn't just about age or external achievements, it's about recognizing and honoring one's essence. Embracing this personal legend means shedding the weight of expectations and forging one's own path. It's about understanding that real success isn't measured by societal yardsticks but by the alignment between one's actions and one's truth. Every young man's legend will be unique and that's the beauty of it. Whether it's pursuing a passion, making a difference, or simply finding contentment, this legend is the beacon guiding them through the murkiness of life's challenges. As we ponder Campbell's wisdom, the takeaway is clear. Facing the dragons isn't an ordeal to dread, but a gateway to growth. And the true mark of adulthood isn't just age or milestones, but the courage to chase one's personal legend, even if it veers off the trodden path. For in the end, it's these unique journeys, these individual legends, that enrich the tapestry of humanity, offering hope and inspiration for the heroes yet to embark on their quests. To understand the journey of young men today, it's enlightening to cast our gaze back in time. Ancient societies with their structured norms and distinct values offer a contrasting backdrop to modernity's fluid landscape. Among the luminaries of ancient civilizations, the Greeks and Romans stand tall, both for their monumental achievements and their intricate societal tapestry. By delving into their perspectives on manhood and responsibility, we gain a deeper appreciation for the timeless essence of adulthood and its ever-evolving challenges. In the heart of ancient Greece, manhood wasn't just an age marker, 
It was a profound transition entailing duties, honor, and societal roles. A boy's transition to a man wasn't simply heralded by physical maturity. The Greeks held a holistic view, encapsulating the spiritual, mental, and civic evolution. The Ephibia, a rite of passage for Athenian boys, epitomizes this multifaceted transition. Beginning at around the age of 18, this rite wasn't just a ceremonial observance. It was an intricate process of training, spanning physical regimen, civic duties, and spiritual introspection. Throughout their Ephibia, young men learned the arts of war, the nuances of governance, and the profound philosophies that Greece is celebrated for. It was a transformative journey, molding not just warriors, but thinkers, leaders, and citizens. Completing this rite wasn't just about individual growth, it was a covenant to society, a pledge of service and responsibility. In their world, a man's worth wasn't gauged by personal achievements alone, but by his contribution to the city-state. Their legends, from the valorous Achilles to the wise Odysseus, further underscored this duality of personal prowess and societal commitment. The Romans, inheriting and expanding upon Greek traditions, had their distinct flavor of manhood. In the heart of Rome, the transition from boy to man was symbolized through the toga virilis. When a boy donned this toga of manhood, usually around the age of 16, it wasn't just a sartorial choice, it was a profound metamorphosis. This change of attire marked his entrance into public life, his readiness to partake in the intricate dance of Roman politics, commerce, and society. Beyond attire, Roman manhood was defined by virtues, derived from vir, meaning man, was the embodiment of courage, valor, and excellence. But alongside virtues, other virtues like gravitas, a sense of duty, pietas, duty to the gods and family, and dignitas, a sense of personal worth, were pillars upon which Roman manhood stood. These virtues were instilled, tested, and honed through military service, public offices, and societal engagements. A Roman man's journey was one of perpetual growth, where every role, be it as a soldier, a senator, or a father, was a stepping stone to deeper wisdom and greater responsibility. The rites of passage and challenges these ancient young men faced were, in essence, societal crucibles. These rituals ensured that the young men not only matured as individuals, but emerged as pillars of their communities. Whether it was defending their homeland, participating in civic duties, or simply upholding familial honor, their adulthood was a tapestry of personal and societal threads interwoven tightly. In contrast to our modern era, where the benchmarks of adulthood are increasingly individualistic and varied, the ancients had clear structured milestones. But at their core, the challenges remain eerily similar. The quest for identity, the balance between personal desires and societal expectations, and the yearning for purpose are constants across time. In drawing parallels and contrasts with these ancient civilizations, we glean insights for our contemporary maze of manhood. Perhaps the lesson is that while the markers of adulthood evolve, its essence remains immutable. It's a balance between self and society, between personal legend and communal duty. The rights may change, the challenges may wear different masks, but the journey in its depth and complexity remains a timeless human endeavor. As the sands of time have ebbed, the canvas of manhood has undergone considerable shifts, particularly evident in the realm of the modern age. Today's young men navigate a terrain starkly different from the structured labyrinths of ancient Greece and Rome. The societal crucibles, once defined by clear rights and communal virtues, are now overshadowed by multifaceted challenges birthed from rapid societal, economic, and educational transformations. Foremost among these transformations is the paradigm shift in education. No longer is education a brief transitional phase. It's an elongated journey often stretching well into the mid-twenties or even thirties for some. 
In ancient societies, by the time a man was in his early twenties, he had already shouldered significant responsibilities. Today, however, that same age might find a young man engrossed in tertiary education, grappling with the intricacies of specialized disciplines, or navigating the demanding corridors of graduate schools. The consequence? A delayed plunge into the working world. This prolongation of academic life creates a ripple effect, postponing not just financial independence, but often other markers of adulthood like marriage, home ownership, or even clarity of purpose. The economic landscape further compounds these delays. Unlike the agrarian or localized economies of yore, today's globalized economy is both an avenue of boundless opportunities and a minefield of unpredictable challenges. Housing, once a straightforward milestone, is now a complex pursuit, with skyrocketing real estate prices in urban hubs. The dream of owning a piece of land, a staple of the proverbial American dream, feels increasingly elusive for many. The job market, too, bears little resemblance to its predecessors. The linear careers of the past have fragmented into a mosaic of gig economies, temporary contracts, and a constant race to upskill in the face of automation and AI. Economic crises, be it the financial meltdown of 2008 or the pervasive ramifications of the COVID-19 pandemic, cast long shadows on job security and financial stability. For a young man today, charting a course in this tumultuous economic sea requires more than diligence. It demands adaptability, resilience, and a penchant for lifelong learning. Parallel to these economic and educational tectonic shifts, the fabric of relationships, family and marriage has undergone profound transformation. The once sacrosanct institution of marriage, often an early milestone in a man's life, has seen its timeline pushed. With shifting societal priorities, Many young men and women prioritize personal growth, career ambitions, and individual pursuits before settling into marital commitments. The notion of family, too, is ever-evolving. Nuclear families, single-parent households, or even chosen families of close friends redefine what home means in the 21st century. Moreover, the dynamics of relationships have adapted to the digital age. In a world where love can spark across continents through screens and where relationships might begin or end with the swipe of a finger, the rules of engagement are continually being rewritten. These changes, while offering unprecedented freedom and choices, also bring forth new challenges. The paradox of choice, the quest for authentic connections in a digital age, and the balancing act between personal independence and shared responsibilities in partnerships. In this modern tableau, young men find themselves juggling an array of roles, expectations and challenges. Where the ancients had clear demarcated rites of passage, today's journey to adulthood is more fluid, less defined, and often punctuated with a series of mini rites spanning decades. Yet beneath these complexities, the underlying quest remains unchanged. The search for identity, purpose, and a rightful place in the societal mosaic. Navigating the complex waters of contemporary masculinity, a term frequently emerges, encapsulating both a cultural archetype and a tangible reflection of our era, the Peter Pan syndrome. This term, much like its namesake from J.M. Barrie's timeless tale, embodies the reluctance to grow up. It paints a picture of individuals trapped in the buoyant bliss of childhood, feet afloat, eyes averse to the shores of adulthood. But is it a mere metaphor, or does it find roots in deeper psychological underpinnings? Let's embark on a journey through its facets, origins, and implications. The Peter Pan Syndrome at its core can be characterized by a profound resistance to the responsibilities of adult life. Individuals grappling with this condition often showcase a palpable fear of commitment, 
whether in relationships, careers, or personal goals. Their lives, rather than charting a definitive trajectory, seem to meander through a labyrinth of short-lived passions, fleeting relationships, and evasive responsibilities. The allure of the now overshadows the promises and perils of the tomorrow. An insatiable quest for pleasure, instant gratification, and an aversion to enduring hardships often punctuate their daily choices. Yet while these attributes paint a vivid portrait, one must tread carefully. Is the Peter Pan syndrome a genuine clinical condition, or is it more of a societal construct? In the clinical realm, while it isn't recognized as a standalone disorder in major diagnostic manuals, certain traits associated with it mirror those found in conditions like avoidant personality disorder or certain types of narcissistic personality disorder. These overlapping characteristics include difficulty committing, avoiding responsibility, or seeking constant validation. Yet it's crucial to distinguish between genuine clinical conditions and behavior patterns influenced by societal and cultural factors. Labeling the latter as pathological can risk oversimplifying and stigmatizing complex behavioral phenomena. Delving into the causal pathways, multiple threads emerge, weaving a tapestry both intricate and intriguing. One significant strand is the rise of overprotective parenting. The helicopter parent, always hovering, shielding their progeny from life's bumps and scrapes, can inadvertently foster a sense of invulnerability in their children. When challenges arise, these individuals, cocooned for years, find themselves ill-equipped to tackle them, leading to avoidance and escapism. Societal changes, as elucidated in our discussion on modern shifts, further compound this. The era of abundant choice, while empowering, can also lead to decision paralysis, when every door is open, stepping through one becomes daunting. The fear of missing out, a distinctly modern malaise, can trap individuals in a perpetual state of indecision, further fueling their Peter Pan tendencies. Inherent personality traits too play their part. Just as some are natural-born leaders or innately curious, others might lean towards comfort, risk aversion, or a heightened need for immediate gratification. While societal constructs or parenting styles can amplify these tendencies, they often have deep-seated roots in an individual's personality matrix. In our exploration of the Peter Pan syndrome, we unearth its layered nuances, origins, and intersections with both personal and societal dynamics. As we step back and view the broader canvas, we understand that it's not just an isolated phenomenon, but a reflection of the evolving nature of adulthood and societal expectations. Addressing it, therefore, is not a matter of mere diagnosis, but a call for societal introspection, understanding, and empathy. As we continue our journey into the psyche of modern manhood, it's essential to approach such phenomena with both critical thought and an open heart, fostering an environment where growth is both encouraged and nurtured. Amidst the myriad analyses of young men's inertia towards adulthood, it becomes essential to step into the domain where questions of existence, meaning, and identity hold sway. Philosophy. Existentialism, a philosophical movement rooted in understanding individual existence and freedom, presents a compelling lens through which to view this conundrum. At its heart lies a concept that resonates deeply with the challenges of modern manhood, authenticity. Existential authenticity is not just a mere understanding of oneself. It's about embracing one's freedom and the associated responsibilities. It's the acknowledgement that our existence is not predetermined, that we have the freedom to shape our destiny, and that in this freedom lies both our greatest strength and our deepest vulnerabilities. To be authentic is to be true to oneself, even when faced with life's inherent absurdities and the weight of external expectations. The theater of existentialism finds one of its most brilliant playwrights in Jean-Paul Sartre. For Sartre, the world is a stage where humans are condemned to be free. This freedom, 
boundless and intimidating, brings with it the anguish of choice. Yet it is within this freedom that the pitfalls of bad faith lurk. Bad faith is a form of self-deception. It's the act of lying to oneself, of evading the truth of one's freedom and the responsibilities it entails. When one lives in bad faith, they adopt false values, embrace societal roles without question, and avoid the sheer responsibility of carving their own path. Let's relate this to the hesitation, the fears of commitment, and the shirking of responsibilities often seen in young men today. Could it be that many are living in bad faith, veering away from the intimidating vastness of their own freedom? The societal templates of success, relationships and manhood might seem enticing because they offer a semblance of structure in an otherwise chaotic existence. Adhering to these templates without introspection is a manifestation of bad faith. It's akin to wearing a mask, a guise that veils the intimidating freedom beneath. The fear of commitment, the allure of the transient, and the evasion of responsibility can all be seen as attempts to escape the weight of this freedom. After all, to commit, to decide, to shoulder responsibility is to confront one's freedom head on. It's to mold the clay of existence with one's own hands, even at the risk of shaping it imperfectly. Existentialism, with its emphasis on individual freedom and authenticity, beckons one to cast away the chains of bad faith and embrace the liberating, albeit daunting, truth of one's existence. It's a clarion call to young men, urging them to shed societal masks, to confront their fears, and to sculpt their destiny with the chisel of authenticity. In this philosophical exploration, existentialism bridges the gap between ancient wisdom and modern dilemmas. Through Sartre's lens, the challenges faced by young men are not just personal or societal, but deeply existential. The journey to adulthood, then, is not just about societal milestones. It's about embracing one's freedom, facing life's inherent absurdities, and seeking a path illuminated by authenticity. Media is undeniably one of the most potent architects of cultural zeitgeist. Films, TV shows, and broader pop culture narratives seep into the collective consciousness, subtly sculpting perceptions and expectations. Within this vast tapestry of tales lies a dual narrative. On one hand, the archetypical hero's journey, a voyage of challenges, growth, and eventual triumph. On the other, an emerging narrative of perpetual adolescence where the tribulations of growth are swapped for the allure of eternal youth. Let's delve into this dichotomy, exploring how media's portrayal of manhood can either invigorate aspirations or entrench escapist tendencies. The hero's journey, as outlined by Joseph Campbell, can be discerned in countless cinematic epics and literary classics. Whether it's Luke Skywalker traversing galaxies or Frodo Baggins journeying through Middle-earth, these characters exemplify the paradigmatic path from innocence through trials to triumphant self-realization. Their narratives are defined by transformation, an arc that resonates deeply with our inherent yearning for growth and purpose. Yet, side by side with these illustrious arcs, contemporary media has birthed a contrasting breed of male protagonists not the heroes who confront dragons, but the eternal adolescents trapped in a temporal stasis. Shows like The Big Bang Theory or movies like The 40-Year-Old Virgin present protagonists who, while endearing, are often ensnared in perpetual boyhood. Their challenges are not monstrous dragons, but mundane dilemmas. Their victories lie not in transformative growth, but in small, often comedic evolutions. The pendulum, it seems, has swung from active heroes facing external adversities to more passive observers navigating internal quandaries. This rise of the endless adolescent trope is not without allure. There's a comforting charm in watching characters navigate a world devoid of dire stakes, a world where every mistake is redeemable and every day promises the glee of boyhood. 
Yet, therein lies the seduction of escapism. If tales of heroic feats inspire aspirations, stories of prolonged adolescence offer a cushion against the thorns of reality. For many young men, this portrayal can act as a soothing balm, legitimizing the delay in confronting life's complexities. The whimsical adventures of on-screen Peter Pans can, subtly, lower the bar for real-world ambitions. Furthermore, media's amplification of escapism isn't merely limited to narratives. The very fabric of modern entertainment, with its sprawling video game universes, binge-worthy series and virtual realities, beckons one to retreat from the tangible world. When virtual victories, be it in conquering game levels or in curating perfect digital personas, offer immediate gratification, the slow, often arduous grind of real-world accomplishments can seem less appealing. However, it's crucial to discern that media isn't a monolithic entity imposing narratives. It's a mirror, reflecting society's evolving values, fears, and aspirations. The portrayal of perpetual adolescence, while potentially stymieing, can also be viewed as a commentary on modern society's complexity. It speaks to the myriad challenges of contemporary adulthood, from economic struggles to existential quandaries. The passive observer, trapped in adolescence, is as much a product of societal shifts as he is of media's crafting. In navigating the maze of modern manhood, media emerges both as a guide and a gatekeeper. While tales of heroism can kindle the flames of ambition, narratives of eternal youth can either offer solace or sow stagnation. The onus then lies with the discerning viewer, to draw inspiration from transformative tales and to view prolonged adolescence not as an ideal, but as a poignant commentary on our times. In this dance of narratives, it's pivotal to remember that every story, no matter how escapist, carries within it kernels of truth reflections of the world it arises from. A fundamental element in the tapestry of human growth is the presence of guiding lights, individuals who, by virtue of their wisdom, experiences and character, illuminate the path for others. Whether it's in the realm of sports, the corridors of academia, or the complex maze of personal development, role models and mentors play a pivotal role in shaping trajectories, aspirations and values. This becomes particularly pronounced when navigating the transition from boyhood to manhood, a journey fraught with questions, challenges and uncertainties. History, in its vast annals, presents numerous figures who epitomize not just excellence in their domains, but also profound wisdom on the art of living. Consider Seneca, the Stoic philosopher and statesman. While his political prowess was significant, it's his philosophical musings that have echoed through millennia. In his letters to Lutilius, Seneca delves into the very essence of manhood, emphasizing virtues like resilience, temperance, and clarity of purpose. He wrote, Life is very short and anxious for those who forget the past, neglect the present, and fear the future. Here, Seneca isn't merely presenting a philosophical aphorism. He's delineating a roadmap for young men, urging them to embrace the present with vigor and purpose, unburdened by past regrets or future anxieties. In the same vein, Marcus Aurelius, the Roman emperor, penned his Meditations, a personal journal that crystallizes the essence of Stoic philosophy. Beyond his imperial duties, Marcus was a mentor in the written word, guiding countless readers through life's tempests. He emphasized virtues like humility, acceptance, and duty. Writing, waste no more time arguing what a good man should be, be one. In this simple directive, young men find a clarion call to action and urging to embody virtues rather than merely extolling them. The wisdom of such historical figures is not just a testament to their personal brilliance, but a reflection of a society that revered the importance of mentorship. In ancient times, philosophers were not remote ivory tower intellectuals, 
They were integral parts of communities, guiding young individuals, shaping civic virtues, and molding future leaders. The tradition of mentorship was enshrined in the very fabric of societies, be it through formal apprenticeships or informal guidance. Fast forward to the present, and the canvas looks somewhat different. The modern age, with its dazzling technological marvels and rapid social shifts, offers young men a plethora of information but often lacks the wisdom that comes from personal, sustained mentorship. The cacophony of online voices can sometimes drown the nuanced patient guidance that mentors traditionally provided. The surge of fleeting influencers might overshadow the timeless wisdom of genuine role models, yet, amidst this flux, the yearning for authentic guidance remains as potent as ever. There's an emerging realization of the paramount importance of strong mentors in today's fragmented society. Community leaders, educators, coaches, and even virtual mentors through online platforms are becoming pivotal anchors for the younger generation. These mentors provide more than just advice. They offer lived experiences, lessons distilled from failures, and a compassionate understanding of the unique challenges today's youth face. They serve as bridges, connecting young men with the timeless virtues of the past while equipping them to navigate the uncertainties of the present. The role of mentors and role models, whether from the pages of history or from contemporary society, cannot be overstated. They are the lighthouses, guiding young men through the foggy waters of adolescence into the vast ocean of adulthood. In their wisdom, patience and experiences, young men find not just answers but also the right questions, not just direction but also purpose. As society evolves, rekindling the tradition of mentorship, adapting it to modern realities, and prioritizing authentic guidance will be pivotal in shaping the men of tomorrow. Transitioning from the tender phase of boyhood into the challenging terrain of adulthood is not a journey undertaken in isolation. It requires a supportive ecosystem, wherein the individual is constantly provided with tools, guidance and markers that denote progress. In observing the phenomena of young men's delayed entry into adulthood, it becomes imperative to discuss actionable solutions that can guide them towards maturity. These solutions are woven into the very fabric of human society, rooted in traditions, but they need to be revitalized and reshaped to cater to the unique demands of contemporary times. Community as the crucible of growth, the proverb, it takes a village to raise a child, is not just a poetic sentiment, but a profound truth. Historically, communities acted as safety nets, ensuring that their young were nurtured educated and integrated into the societal fold. Within the communal structure, young men had access to a spectrum of role models, from the wise elder dispensing life lessons to the skilled artisan teaching a trade. They were surrounded by a milieu that constantly reinforced societal values, norms and expectations. Today, the notion of community has evolved. With urbanization and technological advancements, there's a risk of atomization, where individuals feel isolated despite being hyper-connected digitally. To guide young men towards adulthood, there's a pressing need to reforge these community bonds. This could manifest in mentorship programs, local community initiatives, or group activities that foster teamwork, leadership, and a sense of belonging. By immersing young men in environments where they can observe, interact, and learn from varied individuals, we lay the groundwork for their holistic development. Structured challenges as catalysts. A consistent theme across cultures and epochs has been the idea of challenging the young as a rite of passage into adulthood. Whether it's the Spartan Agoge, where young boys were trained rigorously to become warriors, or the vision quests of Native American traditions, Structured challenges have been instrumental in signaling the transition from boyhood to manhood. In the modern context, the nature of these challenges needs a redefinition. Instead of physical trials, the emphasis can be on intellectual, emotional and moral challenges. Structured programs that push young men out of their comfort zones 
be it through wilderness expeditions, volunteer work in unfamiliar territories, or intellectual debates, can act as crucibles for growth. Facing and overcoming these challenges not only builds resilience, but also instills a sense of accomplishment and self-worth, vital ingredients in the recipe for adulthood. Rites of passage. Human societies have always marked significant life transitions with ceremonies. These rites of passage are not mere cultural rituals. They psychologically and socially cement the transition from one phase of life to another. For young men, these rites can be instrumental in recognizing and celebrating their journey into adulthood. Contemporary society can innovate by creating new rites of passage. This might include ceremonies celebrating milestones like graduating, starting a first job, or even successfully undertaking a community project. By ceremonially recognizing these achievements, young men are provided with clear markers of their journey, reinforcing their progression and maturity. Philosophers, with their introspective depth, have often provided answers to pressing existential questions, laying down principles that transcend time and place. For young men grappling with the challenges of transitioning into adulthood in a rapidly changing world, philosophy offers not just solace but actionable wisdom. This wisdom revolves around three pivotal tenets, embracing responsibility, seeking personal meaning, and living authentically. One of the fundamental shifts from boyhood to manhood is the recognition and acceptance of personal responsibility. Philosophers from the Stoics of ancient Rome to existentialists like Jean-Paul Sartre have emphasized the centrality of responsibility in shaping one's destiny. Stoicism, with its emphasis on virtue and self-control, teaches young men to differentiate between things within their control and those outside it. As Epictetus proclaimed, men are disturbed not by things, but by the views which they take of them. By focusing on their sphere of influence and taking ownership of their actions and reactions, young men can cultivate a sense of agency, grounding their adulthood in self-reliance and purpose. Sartre, with his existentialist lens, went a step further, suggesting that humans are condemned to be free. This freedom carries the weight of absolute responsibility. For young men, this implies recognizing that their choices shape their essence, that they are architects of their fate. Such a realization can be overwhelming, but once embraced, it acts as a compass, directing them towards intentional, purpose-driven lives. Seeking personal meaning. In a world brimming with information, opportunities, and distractions, finding personal meaning can feel like navigating a labyrinth. Philosophers, however, provide a torchlight. Viktor Frankl, a Holocaust survivor and the mind behind logotherapy, posited that the primary human drive is not pleasure, as Freud suggested, but the pursuit of meaning. Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning is more than a book. It's a testament to the indomitable human spirit. For young men, it offers a profound lesson. That meaning is not passively received, but actively created. Whether it's through work, relationships, challenges, or creative endeavors, young men must forge their path, aligning their actions with their intrinsic values and aspirations. Such a quest for meaning provides direction, turning the uncertainty of youth into the clarity of adulthood. Living authentically. The philosophical idea of authenticity, particularly championed by existentialists, revolves around living in alignment with one's true self, unswayed by external pressures or societal facades. Authenticity is the antidote to the bad faith that Sartre discussed, the act of self-deception where individuals deny their freedom and responsibility. For young men, living authentically implies shedding societal masks, questioning inherited beliefs, and forging a path resonant with their core being. It means confronting the anxieties of freedom, the weight of responsibility, and the challenges of individuality, 
but emerging with a life that is genuinely theirs. It's an invitation to be active participants in their narrative, not passive observers. Guiding young men towards adulthood, while complex, can find a structured pathway in philosophy. By embracing responsibility, young men lay the foundations of a purposeful life. By seeking personal meaning, they align this life with their aspirations. And by living authentically, they ensure that this life, in all its challenges and triumphs, remains true to their essence. As they embark on this philosophical journey, young men discover not just the intricacies of adulthood, but the profound joy of a life well lived. Our exploration has spanned vast terrains, both in terms of history and intellect, from the practicalities of changing socio-economic landscapes to the depths of existential philosophy. We've delved into the complexities of young men's delayed entry into adulthood, weaving together threads from various disciplines to understand this phenomenon and, more importantly, to find ways to address it. The timeless voyage from boyhood to manhood is as old as humanity itself. Every era has its unique struggles, but the essence of the journey remains unchanged. It's a pilgrimage of self-discovery, responsibility and personal growth. The ancient Greeks, with their rigorous physical and intellectual training, recognized the importance of rites of passage. Philosophers from Sartre to Frankel implored us to seek meaning and authenticity. Our modern age, with its myriad distractions, has only amplified the need for guidance, reflection and mentorship. Yet, it's not just the youth who can glean insights from our discussion. Regardless of age, each of us is perpetually on the cusp of another adulthood. Life's phases don't end, they evolve. As we grow older, face challenges, embrace new responsibilities and navigate changes, there's always another layer of maturity to attain, another depth of understanding to explore. Every viewer, every individual, has their unique story, marked by successes, failures, joy, and challenges. And it's in the retrospection of this personal narrative that real growth emerges. While the challenges faced by today's young men might seem daunting, history and human resilience provide ample evidence of our capacity to adapt, learn, and thrive. With the wisdom of yesteryears as our anchor and the insights of the present as our compass, we are equipped to guide the next generation and ourselves through the intricate dance of growing up. Every generation with its distinct challenges also births innovators, thinkers, leaders and heroes who, armed with the legacy of the past and the vigor of the present, chart out new horizons. In the symphony of life, growing up is but one movement, beautiful in its melodies and poignant in its crescendos. It's a movement that demands attention, introspection, and action. As we draw this exploration to a close, let it be a beginning for all our viewers, a beginning of reflection, understanding, and a renewed journey towards maturity. After all, the tapestry of adulthood is woven not just with the threads of age, but with those of wisdom, experience, and genuine growth. Let's remember that every sunset is a horizon to a new dawn. Every challenge, an invitation to growth, and every generation, though seemingly astray, eventually finds its way, moving forward with grace, wisdom, and enduring maturity.